Okay, so in today's tutorial, we'll continue in the geometric modeling process. Last week, you've seen how you can create a vessel path from imaging data, um, where you would create the path at the center line of the vessel. And today, we will continue by creating 2D contours along this vessel path. And then in a later step, um, you will learn how to loft those 2D contours to an actual three-dimensional model. We will again work with a demo project that you can find on the Semvascular website over here. And I open Semvascular. Let me now load this demo project. And I already manipulated it a little bit. I deleted all the segmentations over here. Um, this will be the model how it finally will look like once when you download the demo project. Let me toggle that off. And I also created as another path that we might use for an example later. Okay, so let's view the paths that you may have created. Toggle off the crosshair view. So this here is the descending aorta, aortic bifurcation, and the right and left iliac artery. Okay, let's say we want to start with the segmentation of the aorta, right click, on segmentations and create contour group. You select the path along which you want to create your segmentations and by default your group name will be the same as the path which is fine for this example. And now double click on our order and your view of some vascular now changes. In this right window over here you have a 3D view with a with this red square here which is called probe plane and this plane will move perpendicular to your path line and um, re-slice your image data perpendicular to the path line along all the, along, well actually for this case, 615 re-slice planes. Okay. If you want to change the size of this re-slice window, you can do this over here. Because sometimes your vessel might be bigger and you want to increase the size. You have to click into the window to um, readjust the view. Or, well for our example, five was actually just pretty good. So let's go back to five. Okay, click in the window again. And in the left upper window over here, you can see the image intensity. And in the left lower window over here, you can see the magnitude of the image intensity gradient. So um, the highest values in this image over here are the steepest changes in image intensity over in this image over here, in the upper image. Okay. So we will start by creating level set segmentations and to do that you click on level set and this window here comes up and you can see how um, there are a couple of parameters pre-chosen and those define the two stages of the level set search algorithm. The result from this stage here we don't really see in our window over here but it will be the um, initial condition for the second stage of the level set search. If you want to know more details, you can take a look at this article over here, Symvascular, an open source pipeline for cardiovascular simulation. And on page oh no, down here, um, the level set method is described and also further references are given if you want to know more about it. Okay, otherwise, um, these parameters usually work pretty well. This year, um, the seed radius would specify the radius of your initial circular sphere in the 2D window. Um, if your vessel is not really, really small, you usually don't have to change that. And all the parameters that start with a K um, kind of prescribe the allowable curvature of your final segmentation. I can show you an example. But first, let's use the default set of parameters. Just click on Level Set again. And the resulting 2D segmentation that is found is this one over here. Um, and now just to give you an idea what happens if you really, really increase the curvature, like the upper bound of curvature to 80 and the lower bound of curvature, make that one much smaller. And you create a level set, just click on it again. You can see how the curvature of your final segmentation would increase too with all those sharper edges over here. Okay, so let's go back to the previous set of values that we had, 0 0.8 for the upper bound and 0 0.09 for the lower bound. Click on it again. Okay, that looks pretty good. 
Um, and now what you do is you move your re resliced plane, the probe plane, to the next location where you want to create a level set segmentation. Click on level set again. If it looks good, you move on. And basically, um, you can do this just for the whole length of your path and just check out if it works nicely. If for some reason at any of the locations you're not too happy with the result, um, you have a few options. You can click on the contour that you want to change. For example, if you want to smooth it, so here is a little edge down there. If you want to smooth that out, click on smooth. And now in the contour list, the um, the specific level set will show up as contour and level set plus smooth. Okay, let me go to a location where it might be more difficult for the level set algorithm to find a good solution. Here, for example, there's a branch coming off that in this model we are actually ignoring. But if I use the level set method to find the center, uh, the segmentation, then of course it will um, travel in inside of that branch. And this is not what I want over here. Jump back to this contour. Okay. If you want to change the shape or location of your contour, you have some control points over here. This control point allows you to change the size of the resulting contour, and this control point allows you to, to change the sen and the location of the center point. But of course, that's not enough in our case, and we have two different options. Number one, um, we convert the resulting level set to a spline, say with 12 control points, you click on level set again, and now you have all these control points on the outline of your segmentation, and you can drag them to wherever you want them to be. and say I'm happy with this one, I can just leave it like this now. Or the second option, let's go back, um, say I have this level set over here that I don't like, I would delete it, and now I can create a manual um, segmentation by clicking on spline poly, and then with left mouse clicks, you just add control points wherever you want them to be. Double click to finalize the curve, and this will be your resulting outlook, outline. If you want to add more control points, just hover anywhere on top of your segmentation, and you can add additional control points to your segmentation. And from this point on, we can continue with our segmentations um, along the vessel path, either by using the level set method, smoothing it or by creating manual segmentations with a spline poly. Okay. And double click to finalize. Okay. To speed things up a little bit, you can use something that's called batch mode. Um, for this, I would toggle on the batch mode and again the convert to spline so that I can manipulate my resulting segmentations. And I am already at reslice plane number 219. So let's say I will start at 260. I will go in increments of 30 um, reslice levels and I will continue this batch mode until the last reslice plane, which is number 615. Okay, and then you just click level set again and it will create you a whole batch of set level set segmentations just as you specified in your list here. I will toggle that off. And let's go through and see how they are doing. Um, you would now go manually through your whole list and just make sure that they all look reasonable the way you expect them to be. Okay, that looks pretty nice. And another feature that allows you to judge whether your segmentations are doing okay is this lofting preview window over here. If you toggle it on, you will see the lofting of your final um, out yeah, of the final vessel, um, and you can maybe already see that in this area over here you might be off a little bit. To better see how far off you are, you can again use your reslice plane and just 
move along the vessel path and here we can actually see how our segmentation or the lofted segmentation and the actual vessel differ so at this point I would introduce a new segmentation that looks nice toggling on the preview again okay and you would just continue like this until you are satisfied with the final lofting of your um, segmentations and they coincide well with the vessel that you want to model. Um, something else that we should mention here is how you um, segment the intersections of two, two vessels. So let's create a second contour list of the right iliac. Again, create contour group. Now we choose right iliac. I'm happy again with the default name, so I just click OK. The right iliac group is um, generated and we have our reslice window now starting in the right iliac and following the path of the right iliac. Let me just try again um, the batch mode. How long is our path? It's got 304 slices, so I will start at zero say in increments of, um, uh, let's try 15 until 300 and see how that is doing. Okay, all our segmentations are created and let's go through them one by one. I will hide the lofted or order model just for now so that I can better see how my um, right iliac segmentations are doing. Okay, this is the first one. It's well aligned with the, with the aorta, second segmentations. Okay. And now I'm just going to look at the upper part. And the lower part you, have, um, you would have to double check just as you did with the um, other segmentations for the aorta. Okay, so let's just look at those upper four segmentations. And since this vessel um, and the lofted aorta should join and create um, well, a coherent model, what you want to have is that your initial segmentations are completely um, inside of the vessel that they are branching off from. So that's why I'm reducing the size of this first level set over here, even though the actual vessel outline is, is bigger. I'm doing the same with the second one because, it, again, it's still 100% in, um, inside the uh, order. Oh, or inside the other branch that we segmented. Okay, but here um, we are already in the right iliac. So let's see how the lofting is doing. And that looks pretty okay especially because afterwards you can um, smooth some of these areas in the model building step. But say that if you're not happy, what you would do is um, you would maybe increase the size of this segmentation a little bit and see how that changes the intersection. Yeah, that might be better. Okay, and um, a third possibility to double check on your how your segmentations are doing and how the final model might come out is to go back into our four window pane over here and just use your Axel view slider to see how the lofted preview of your segmentations and how they are doing at junctions or along all of the vessels. And anywhere where you're not happy with your segmentations, just go back into the segmentation window and adjust any of the control points or add or delete additional segmentations. And one last thing I wanted to mention is that it's important to not have overlapping segmentations. To demonstrate that, I'm going to use the example of the superior mesenteric artery. So I will create, uh, let me first show you the, how the path looks like. So this here is the superior mesentery artery, and just so you see how bent the path line is at the beginning. Um, 
this will help me create overlapping segmentations. That's why I made it like this. So I create a contour group from that path cut over here. And let me just use the level set method in batch mode, convert to splines, go to slice number 40. All in all, this path has just over 100 um, re-slices. Click on level set and see what's, what we're getting. So let me first check those here. So this level set is clearly wrong. I'm going to delete that. Um, this one here is also pretty wrong. But I'm just going to um, leave that in for the sake of the demonstration of the overlapping segmentations. And now if we toggle on the lofting preview, first nothing happens. Let's check the lofting parameters and switch to spline and say apply. Okay. Um, you can now see how your resulting lofted model does not, um, it's just not correct. So um, it's self-intersecting and that's the main reason why you should never have overlapping segmentations. They will not result in a correct model. Okay, so this was all I wanted to quickly show you about 2D segmentations. Thanks for watching.